Are you prepared for a power outage? This hypothetical situation isn't as far-fetched as it might seem. Power outages, whether from natural disasters, system failures, or even deliberate attacks, can and do happen. And when they do, are you ready to light your home, cook your meals, or power your devices? Having a plan for power generation isn't just a good idea, it's crucial. It can mean the difference between discomfort and disaster, between sitting in the dark and keeping the lights on. And it isn't just about having a backup generator. There are a number of ways to generate power, from the traditional to the innovative, from the simple to the complex. So, if the power grid were to fail today, would you be ready? Let's discover the seven ways to generate power when the grid goes down. First on our list is the power of the sun, solar panels. These ingenious devices work by converting sunlight into electricity. They do this using a fascinating process called photovoltaics. Solar panels are made up of many smaller units called solar cells, each one acting like a sandwich, trapping the sun's energy between layers of silicon, a semiconductive material. The benefits of using solar panels are numerous. They are a clean, renewable source of energy, producing no harmful emissions. They are also silent, require minimal maintenance, and, once installed, provide energy for free. However, their effectiveness is dependent on two crucial factors, location and weather conditions. For optimal use, panels should be installed in an area with consistent sunlight and minimal shading. There are, of course, some drawbacks. The initial cost of installation can be high, and their efficiency can be affected by cloudy or rainy conditions. Despite these challenges, harnessing the sun's power is a clean, renewable way to stay powered up during a grid failure. Next, we delve into the power of water through hydroelectric turbines. Now, imagine a water wheel spinning. The spinning is caused by the force of water flowing over or under it. Now, let's replace that water wheel with a turbine. The same principle applies. The force of the water spins the turbine, which is connected to a generator. As the turbine spins, it generates electricity. It's a simple yet powerful process. Hydroelectric power has its benefits. It's renewable. And unlike solar power, it works around the clock as long as the water is flowing. But it's not without challenges. You'll need a consistent water source such as a stream or river. And the setup can be complex, yet the payoff can be substantial. Imagine harnessing the energy of a river to power your home. With a reliable water source, you can keep the lights on even when the grid goes dark. The third method to consider is harnessing the wind's power with wind turbines. Now imagine a giant pinwheel spinning in the breeze. That's essentially what a wind turbine is, but instead of just twirling around for fun, it's generating electricity. The wind propels the blades of the turbine around a rotor, which is connected to a main shaft that spins a generator to create electricity. But wind power isn't without its drawbacks. For one, you need a consistent wind flow. Turbines also require a fair amount of space and can be a bit noisy. The initial setup cost may be high too, but over time, the savings on your electricity bill can offset this. However, the beauty of wind power lies in its simplicity and efficiency. Once the wind turbine is up and running, it requires little maintenance and can generate power whenever the wind is blowing. Even a gentle breeze can help to keep your power running during a grid outage. Now let's tap into the Earth's heat with geothermal and steam power. This method is all about harnessing the natural heat from the Earth's core. Water is pumped deep underground where it turns into steam due to the intense heat. This steam is then used to spin a turbine generating electricity. There are many benefits to this method. Firstly, it's a continuous source of power, not dependent on the weather or daylight. It's also a green energy source, producing minimal emissions. However, there are a few potential drawbacks. The initial setup can be costly and technically challenging. Plus, not all locations are suitable. You need to be in an area with geothermal activity to harness this power. Another thing to consider is the environmental impact. While it's a cleaner energy source, it can cause surface instability and even minor earthquakes. If you live in the right location, the Earth's heat can be your power source when the grid fails. Coming up next is the power of organic materials biomass power generation. Biomass power generation is a process that harnesses the energy contained within organic materials, such as wood, agricultural waste, and even food scraps. These materials undergo combustion or burning to produce heat, which then gets converted into electricity. The advantage of biomass power is its renewability. As long as we manage our resources responsibly, we can keep producing biomass-based power indefinitely. Plus, it's a fantastic way of recycling organic waste that would otherwise end up in landfills. 
However, the challenge lies in ensuring a consistent supply of organic materials. You'd need to have a steady stream of biomass to keep your power generation going. This could mean storing large amounts of organic waste or even cultivating energy crops. Biomass power generation isn't without its hurdles, but with proper planning and resource management, it's a viable option for off-grid power generation. With a steady supply of organic materials, you can generate your power during a grid outage. Our sixth method is the traditional gas or diesel combustion generators. These generators have been widely used for decades and are a reliable source of power in many situations. They work by converting the chemical energy and fuel into mechanical energy, which then turns an alternator to produce electricity. The magic behind this process lies in the internal combustion engine, where the fuel is mixed with air, ignited, and the resulting force moves pistons that drive the generator. One of the key benefits of these generators is their power output. They can produce a significant amount of electricity, enough to power your entire home or even a small community. They're also relatively easy to operate and maintain, provided you have a basic understanding of engines. However, as with everything, there are drawbacks. The first is noise. These generators can be loud, which may not be ideal in a survival situation where you want to keep a low profile. Furthermore, they emit carbon dioxide, contributing to air pollution. But perhaps the most significant consideration is fuel. These generators require a steady supply of gas or diesel to run, this means you'll need to store a considerable amount of fuel if you want to use your generator for an extended period. Now, storing fuel brings its own set of challenges. It's flammable, so it must be kept away from heat sources and properly ventilated. It also has a shelf life. Gasoline, for instance, can start to degrade after just six months. Diesel lasts longer, up to two years, but it's still something to keep in mind. There are additives available that can extend the life of your fuel, and if stored properly in a cool, dry place within an approved container, you can get around these issues. But, it's crucial to rotate your stock and use the oldest fuel first. Despite these challenges, gas and diesel generators are a viable option for post-grid power production. With careful planning, you can overcome the drawbacks and have a dependable power source when you need it most. With a generator and a supply of fuel, you'll be able to keep your home powered during a grid failure. Finally, we have one of humanity's oldest discoveries, fire. Fire, in its primal and uncontrolled form, may seem like a far cry from the sophisticated power sources we've discussed, but it holds its own in the realm of off-grid power generation. Harnessing the power of fire can be as simple as using it for heat and cooking, or as complex as converting that fire into electricity through a thermoelectric generator. These devices use the heat differential between the fire and the surrounding cooler air to generate usable electricity. However, while fire is a readily available and potent source of power, it comes with its own set of challenges. Fire requires fuel, and without a steady supply, it's not a sustainable solution. Plus, safety is paramount. Fire can be dangerous if not properly managed, so always ensure you have adequate fire safety measures in place. Fire, one of our earliest discoveries, can still help us generate power when the grid goes down. We've gone over seven ways you can generate power when the grid goes down. We discussed harnessing the sun's energy with solar panels, tapping into water power with hydroelectric turbines, and capturing the wind's force with wind turbines. We explored the heat beneath our feet with geothermal and steam power and the potential of plant and animal waste through biomass power generation. We also delved into the reliability of gas and diesel combustion generators. And don't forget the primal power of fire, a basic yet indispensable survival tool. Each of these methods has its strengths and challenges, and the best approach often involves a combination of several. The future may be uncertain, but your preparedness doesn't have to be. Equip yourself with knowledge and tools and diversify your power generation methods to ensure your resilience in any scenario. Remember, preparation is key. Stay safe, stay prepared, and keep the lights on, even when the grid goes down.